This is question 19 from a series of videos taking a look at the LXL practice papers. Here we're told that a road is 4,530 metres long, correct to the nearest 10 metres. Then we're told that Kirsty drove along the road in 205 seconds, correct to the nearest 5 seconds. Then we're told that the average speed limit for the road is 80 kilometres per hour. And we're asked, could Kirsty's average speed have been greater than 80 kilometres per hour? So the first thing we're going to have to recognise with this question is that our measurements for the distance and our measurement for the time that they have not been measured accurately. So our measurement for the distance has only been measured at, um, correct to the nearest 10 metres. Our measurement for time has only been measured correct to the nearest 5 seconds. So when we're going to need to think about this carefully when we are calculating the speed that Kirsty was going at. So first of all, let's write down our speed formula. Speed is equal to distance distance divided by time. So what we now need to think about is well what gives us a high speed because we want we want to know what the fastest speed she could have been going at. Now if we think about this calculation Greater speeds are achieved if a higher distance is covered in a small amount of time. So great high speeds are achieved when there is a great deal of distance covered in a small amount of time. So that means that we need to find the greatest possible distance that Kirsty could have travelled and the shortest amount of time that she could have done it in. So what we're going to work out here is that we're going to work out the upper bound for distance and we are going to divide that by the lower bound for time. The upper bound for distance just being the greatest possible amount that she could have, um, the furthest that she could have travelled given that the distance is correct to 10 metres and the lower bound just meaning the shortest amount of time that she could have taken to do it. So. <clears throat> First of all, our upper bound for distance. The upper bound for distance is going to be, so if it's correct to 10 metres, the upper bound is going to be 4,535. And that's for distance. The lower bound, so let's write that here, 4,435. And we are going to divide that by the lower bound for time. So the lower bound for time is going to be, uh, so correct to the nearest five seconds, so that's going to be 202.5. So if she had achieved a time of 202.5 seconds, if we were to round that to the nearest five, we would say that that's 205. So the quickest that she could have done this in, the shortest amount of time was 202.5, and the um, furthest distance she, that she could have travelled in 202.5 seconds would be 4,535 metres. So now what we are going to do is we are going to work out this calculation. So type that into our calculator and what we're going to have uh, 4535 uh, divided by 202.5. So that gives us an answer of, we'll call that 22.4. Now, be careful here. Um, I'm not going to use 22.4 in my further calculations because there's going to be a, a few more things that I need to do. So I'm going to leave everything in my calculator, but uh, just for because we're asked to show our working, I'm just going to write down 22.4 here for now. Um, so just rounding it to three significant figures. But actually, the calculations that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using the number that's in my calculator, which is 22.3950761728. Um, so this is, so we've done our calculation, and this is 22.4. And now, what, what speed is this in terms of what units have we been using? We said that this was, this amount on top was meters. This number on the bottom was seconds. So our time here is 22.4 
meters per second. Now what we now need to do is we need to turn that into kilometers per hour. So first of all, let's turn that let's turn our meters into kilometers. And we know that there is one for one kilometer, there are 1,000 meters. So how much of a kilometer will be covered in one second? Well, we're covering 22.4 meters. So to work out what that would be in kilometers, we're going to have to divide that by 1,000. So let's take that amount and divide it by 1,000. That's going to give me 0 0.22395, etc., etc. So, um, what we can then say is that this is 0.02, uh, sorry, 0. 0. 0.0, wasn't it? 0.0224 kilometers per second. And now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change this second into hours. So how many seconds are there in a minute? 60. So if we're traveling 0.0224 kilometers per second, then if I multiply this by 60, that will tell me what it is in each minute. And then if I multiply by 60 again, that will tell me how far I've traveled in each hour. So I'm going to multiply by 60. So that is the number of kilometers covered per minute. So 1.34 kilometers per minute. And then if I multiply that by 60 again, this will tell me how many kilometers are covered per hour. And so my answer to this is 80.62 recurring. So I've got a speed here of 80.62 recurring kilometers per hour. And now the question that I'm being asked is, could Kirsty's average speed have been greater than 80 kilometers per hour? So our final answer is uh, yes. And our reason for yes is because she could have been going 80.62 um, recurring kilometers per hour. So yes, she could have been going 80.62.